On today's Fast Friday, Gear Iguana is going to show you how we were able to pack up all of this gear. Let's do it. Hi everyone and welcome to Palta Tech. Today we are talking about how to pack a single camera bag for use in all kinds of different shooting situations. I just came back from a week long trip to Eastern Georgia and I had a few expectations for this trip. The first, I was going to test out the Fujifilm X-S10. More about that in a future video. Number two, I wanted to shoot some street photography in downtown Savannah. I wanted to test out time-lapse photography on beaches with sunrises and sunsets. Number four, I wanted to shoot wildlife in the distance. Number five, I wanted to catch all the little moments with my family through vlogging. Number six, I wanted to shoot a cosplay scene at sunrise with a shore trooper. And lastly, I wanted to get cinematic shots of the island and the sunset and the beaches, so I needed to bring a drone with me. The bag that I ended up using is this Low Pro Pro Tactic 450. They also make a small version, the 350. The 350 is better if you only have one camera body and a couple of lenses. This one, the 450, is good for two camera bodies with a lot of extra room for other things. So that was my main bag for general use, you know, going from hotel to hotel, traveling there, and that sort of thing. However, I needed something a bit smaller for when I was walking around and needed to get to places quickly, and that is this right here. This is the Low Pro LP371 159 PWW waste bag. And I love this thing. It is wonderful. Now, I just want you to know that every single product that you're going to be seeing in this video was not sponsored. I just got back. Look, there's still sand on the lens cap. And these are all products that came with me on the trip. None of them paid me whatsoever to be included in this video. These are simply products that I think worked out wonderfully for me and the kind of shooting that I was doing away from the studio. Now, because I had to deal with two camera bodies in all kinds of different environments, I also brought this right here. This is the Black Rapid Curve, and it's wonderful. You slip it on like this, right? So I got one camera just like this, but if I wasn't using this camera, I could throw it behind me like that and pull out this one and have this one see. Let's talk about the cameras that I brought. First, the Fujifilm X-S10. That was the camera I was bringing along to test and review. The second camera I brought was the Fujifilm X-T4. When I wasn't shooting test footage, this was going to be the camera to capture everything else. But I also wanted to catch all the little moments, and for that, this was the best camera I could have brought. This is the GoPro Hero 9 Black. GoPro finally made a fairly decent camera with this one. Next, I brought this little Canon G7X. I love this camera too. The only problem with the G7X is it does not shoot 4K, it's 1080 only. I hesitated a lot before deciding to bring this thing on the trip with me, because I do not believe that when you go on vacation, Vacation, your head should still be in work in any way, shape, or form. So what I did was I took the SIM card out and turned this thing basically into a portable 4K video camera. In addition, it was important to me to capture good audio with these Fujifilm cameras. So I brought along the Rode VideoMic Pro, which is my favorite external microphone for the Fujifilm camera. I also might need a little light for those low light shooting conditions, so I brought this little Aperture Amaran MC light. It also has all these pretty colors that you can choose from. Okay, let's talk lenses now. Along with the X-S10, Fujifilm did send me this 18 to 55 kit lens to test the camera out with. My go-to lens, the lens that I ended up using the most on the trip, is the 16 to 55 zoom lens. I've said this many times, the 16 to 55 is literally like having four prime lenses in one. And because of that, even though I also brought the 35 millimeter f2 prime and the 16 millimeter prime, I didn't use the 35 millimeter at all. The 16 millimeter I used a few times and that's it, but I probably could have gotten away with this one zoom lens. And I'm gonna use a lens that I haven't discussed much on this channel, and that's the 55 to 200 millimeter zoom. This lens ranges in f-stop from f3.5 to f4.8, depending upon the focal length that you have it set to. Just a wonderful longer focal length zoom travel lens. And lastly, for fun, I always do this, I bring the Rokinon on eight millimeter fisheye lens. This is an all manual lens that fits right on the Fujifilm camera. It's 
It's wonderful. Love this thing. And just allows you to take those kinds of shots that you cannot get with any other kind of lens. It even has an aperture ring that goes clickety click. Okay, enough with the lenses. Now let's talk tripods. So I went with the Mifoto Aluminum Backpacker. It's not the greatest tripod I've ever used and it's certainly not a carbon fiber tripod. The next tripod I brought with me was this Gorilla Pod by Joby. This is the smaller one and it will not support a Fujifilm camera, but it's brilliant for smaller cameras such as the Canon that I mentioned, right? And I ended up screwing this phone attachment into the top of the Gorilla Pod because it's not one of those phone attachments where you're like pulling them apart and having to cram the phone in. It has a screw top, you see that? So you can just drop the phone in there, screw it down and it's good to go. However, I felt something was missing. So I wanted one more tripod that was not as large or as heavy as this, but could hold more weight than the Joby Gorilla Pod. And I don't really like these type of bendy tripods, so I, that was out. I didn't want another one of those. So Aoka 15 inch carbon fiber tripod. This was pretty cool. Look at that, it's really, really thin, okay? This thing is absolutely as light as a feather. However, it can hold the X-T4 with a telephoto zoom lens, no problem whatsoever. Look at this. Is it the sturdiest thing in the world? No, it's not. But for traveling, check out how small it gets. It also can go completely flat like this, and you can take the top part off and then plop the camera on like this and have some real low down shots. Now, because I was gonna be shooting a lot of video on the beach with swooping shots coming in either on a drone or handheld, I would need a gimbal. So my solution was the Zhuin Smooth 4. This gimbal pairs with your smartphone and it works great. Of course, with all that sand, I need a little rocket air blaster. I probably should have brought the large. I brought a whole bunch of SD and micro SD cards with me and kept them all right here. And one little trick that I used for the micro SD cards, I put them in like a little plastic holder like that. That way they just don't get lost. Drop them in there, fold that like that, and I'm good to go. Now, obviously charging batteries is gonna be a thing on the go. So for the USB, I have this little Anchor 4 port USB hub, but what I ended up using most of the time and what I absolutely love for the price even is this Anchor 2 outlet, 2 USB port hub. And anytime you go to a hotel, there's never enough outlets. So you take one of these with you you, you plug it right into one of the outlets in the hotel. Usually they have the lamp, right, plugged into the other one, but now you still have two right there. And on the bottom, you have these high powered USB ports. So what I had was one, two, three, four, five, six USB hubs and an extra outlet. And this little compact setup was all I needed. I also brought a laptop. Luckily the Low Pro 350 and the 450 both have a padded backing that can hold the laptop. This is the DJI Mavic Mini. This is an incredible drone. It shoots 4K video at 30 frames a second. You can shoot 1080p at 60 frames a second. These batteries are great. You get about 30 minutes of flight time. You can launch this thing from anywhere. I even launched it right from the roof of my car, flew it straight up and over. It was awesome. And it comes right back to where you are. I could fly it anywhere. If you'd ever like me to do a video on basics of drones for photographers, let me know and I'd be happy to do one. And lastly, to power up all this gear, we're gonna need some batteries and some chargers. And the best organizer I found for the Low Pro bag is this Low Pro Gear Up camera box. And my first tip is the most important one of all, and that is, whenever possible, take less gear. I can't emphasize that enough. If you think that you might use something, but you're not sure, don't bring it. So with that being said, let's put everything in this bag that we just talked about and see if it fits. Starting off with the laptop computer, that goes right here in the pouch. So the next item to pack are the cameras. And normally I remove the lenses from the cameras whenever I pack them. I find that it's just, you know, it's just safer to do it that way. In this case though, with the Low Pro 450, it's actually perfect to keep the lens on the camera and that drops right in here. Boom, just like that. What's nice about these bags are they come with these dividers, which you can then, you know, set it up any way you want. If you've never use this kind of Velcro dividing system, my suggestion is don't be intimidated by it. Rip them all out when you get the bag and then you're stuck having to put them back in and work with them. And after about 15 or 20 minutes, you'll have it down perfect. Next camera to go in is the Fujifilm X-S10 for my testing. I'm gonna drop it right in here. Next are the lenses, 55 to 200. 
16 millimeter prime, 18 to 55 kit lens with a 35 millimeter right there. Here's that low pro gear up box I talked about earlier. Here's what's inside of it. Everything's organized, right? You can store your batteries in the charger, takes up less space. And that closes just like that. There you go, it's all organized and check this out. Plop, right in there, just like that. Now, if I ever quickly need it, I just boom, pull it out right by, that felt so good. I'm gonna do that again. Boom. Let's put the drone in next. The video light and the ND filters. We've got the GoPro camera. The Canon G7X. Now the tripod and the tripod head. The black rapid camera strap that we talked about earlier. Another tip is to have lots of little bags inside so that you can quickly get to things. So for example, here's a bag, boom. I can get to all my battery stuff. Here's another bag, boom. I can get to all the miscellaneous, you know, the little things like this blower, extra lens covers. That goes right in here, just like that. Now it's just about finished, but I have to put this Rode mic in here in the camera compartment. It's such a big area and it fits perfectly right in there. Lastly, I take the low pro waist bag and that goes right on top here. It sort of acts like padding. And then I take the SD cards and they go on the side of the pack right here. And in case you have crappy weather, you've got this bottom thing that flips out and this is sort of a little poncho, right? to cover your pack. And don't forget about these two secret compartments right on the straps. On one of them, I kept the car keys, which I had one of those goofy Apple tag locator things, which I put in here. That way, let's say someone stole the bag or I lost it or it was misplaced. I can use this app to find the bag, which <laughs> it's telling me it's right here. There's the top compartment right here which I can quickly, boom, get to the camera. There's also a compartment on the side for that extra camera body. I did not have this set up that way, but I could have. But in this case, boom, there are my batteries. Takes me two seconds to get to it. Lastly, the tripod goes on the back. So what I like to do is put one strap under one of the tripod handles. You see that right there? That way, for whatever reason, if things got loose, it doesn't go anywhere. It gives it that little bit of extra protection. And that's it, just like that. There it is on me, see? And that's it. The entire kit is with me right on my back. And I could go to a destination. I could then use that as my home base. I can take the back pouch out, clip it around my waist, and I'm good to go. So tip number five is from a time management expert named Dave Crenshaw, and I modified it slightly. What it is is, Every piece of gear has a home, but no visitors allowed. Let me explain. So for example, I would never put anything in here that didn't have to do with batteries or chargers. Nothing ever goes in here but cords. That way, if you quickly need to get something like a micro SD card, you know exactly where to get it and it's not mixed up with other stuff. I realize on this video that we covered a lot of gear. One of the best days ever! All about the gear! All about the gear! Gear Iguana, that's not what it's all about. Yes, it is! No, it's not. Go do something. <sighs> Yes, I brought a lot of gear, <laughs> okay? But my last tip is the most important one of all, and that is it's really important to not let the gear get in the way of making any memories. Don't spend so much time organizing, thinking about, collecting, arranging, and that sort of thing, your gear, at the expense of missing out what's happening around you. I would have traded all of that gear, everything that you saw today that I packed into that bag, I would have gotten rid of all of it and traded it for this one camera. Because what happened was I had planned on using all of that gear to shoot an incredible, dramatic sunrise over Jekyll Island. I had the drone queued up. I had three or let's see, one, two, I had three cameras ready to go, doing time-lapse, doing slow-mo B-roll, all of that stuff. I had planned it out and then looked at when, where the sun was gonna be coming up and everything. I did all my homework, I had everything ready. And at about 5.15 that morning, I decided to get my son up and have him come out and spend time with him. I just wanted him there. And suddenly it became 
about that. And the gear was great, and I captured some incredible stuff with that gear. I mean, really good stuff, but what meant the most to me was this GoPro, which I had just dropped in the sand behind us, and I meant to start shooting it in regular 4K video just to get coverage of the entire scene and everything that was gonna be going on, but I accidentally pressed the time-lapse feature, and that is the one piece of footage, if I could throw everything else out, the bag, the gear, the drone, the cameras, the all that stuff, and not take it with me and just have this one thing, this trip would have been a success. It was awesome. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I gotta go put all this gear away, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. But I am signing off now. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see all of you again in another video next week. Take care.